most of us don't know where to start when to start how to start and what to do to earn that scholarship opportunity hello i am dr arun and i recently completed my phd in biomedical engineering from south korea and i am going to start this short series about finding scholarships so many viewers contact me and they ask me that how to find scholarships so there are a lot of scholarships in the world but mainly students don't know how to apply for them so i have started this short series that i will continue and we will explore about different scholarship options and opportunities available for students all around the world mostly students are stuck at the point that they don't know where to apply and what to do so i will start with that that what opportunities are there and where they can apply there are hundreds and thousands of opportunities for studying on scholarships but most of us don't know where to start when to start how to start and what to do to earn that scholarship opportunity it could be a scholarship for a bachelor's degree a master's degree a phd or even a postdoc if you already earned a phd i will be answering all these questions in this video and if still i am left out with any of the questions you can post them in the comments below the first two questions that what scholarships are available and where to find them that totally depends upon you that totally depends upon your study level upon your preferences that what studies you will be pursuing and where you want to study the next question that when to apply for a scholarships the answer is pretty simple certainly when the application period of that scholarship starts so that is the time and we need to keep a note that when a certain scholarship will open its application so that is the exact time that we have to apply for that scholarship and then we have to apply for as many as opportunities as possible so that we have the maximum chances to win that scholarship it may vary from opportunity to opportunity for example in some cases first you apply for a scholarship and then you secure an admission in some university and sometimes you first secure an admission in some university and then you apply for a scholarship while in some of the cases both processes go side by side so it totally depends on what and which scholarship you are going to apply for so according to that timeline you will apply that takes us to the next question that how to apply every scholarship opportunity comes with application guidelines so you do not need to worry that how to apply for a scholarship so the main thing you have to do is to decide that which scholarship you are going to apply for and then rest of the questions would be automatically answered normally students are confused that how to apply for scholarships the answer is you do not need to worry how to apply for the scholarship first you need to decide that what scholarship you going to apply for and the application procedure will be given in that first you need to decide that what scholarship you are going to apply for with respect to different scholarships you will require different documents that you need to provide for the application process let's talk about the prerequisites that you need to apply for a scholarship first one and the most important one are your academic documents the degrees you have earned and on the basis of those degrees you will be pursuing your education to the next level especially higher education then all of those academic documents must be attested or apostilled from your home country so that they will be valid or they will be accepted in the next country where you will be applying for a scholarship then if you are coming from a country that doesn't have english as its native language you must have ielts or toefl an international language test like ielts or toefl that assures that you can speak english up to a certain level because english is an international language and universities all around the world offer courses in english language so that's why one of the test of english like toefl or ielts is compulsory to apply for foreign scholarships then there are other tests 
that some countries or some of the universities might require like GRE, graduate record examination. That is required for pursuing graduate studies, either MS or PhD in USA or even in Singapore. So if you are targeting Singapore or USA, you must do GRE. Even if you are not applying for USA or Singapore, if you have GRE, that will further highlight your profile among other candidates, even if you apply for Europe or UK scholarships. Before I tell you that how to apply for scholarships and what scholarships are there, I want you to keep some things in mind that are really important. And you must be serious about these things before applying for any kind of scholarship. First and foremost is what is your purpose for this scholarship, especially for this foreign scholarship? Is it really that you want to improve your profile or you're just applying for this scholarship that you want to travel the world or you're applying for this scholarship that you want to do cultural exchange, like you want to study about other culture and you want to learn about other culture and you want to show your culture to other country or this is another important that if you are coming from underdeveloped country and you want to apply for a scholarship in a developed country is your purpose the citizenship of that country after completing your studies would you be settling in that country so then you should focus on those countries that have opportunities for work after you complete your studies and eventually you would be able to settle down or take the citizenship of that country. So on such preferences, you must decide that what kind of scholarship you want or in which country you want to go, taking benefit from the scholarships being offered in those countries. After you have decided that what is the purpose of achieving a scholarship for you, then comes the question that how much motivated are you? What is your motivation? because this is not going to be an easy process. You might face some rejections, some continuous rejections over the period of six months or a year or sometimes two years. But one thing you must keep in mind, it, if you continue doing that, you will succeed eventually. If not this year, maybe next year, you will succeed. But you must make a mission and then you have to stick to that. So you must be truly motivated apply for scholarships especially masters and PhD scholarships and it is a long process another thing that will really matter is what is influencing your decision if you are taking this decision because some other person or some of your friend went on a scholarship and you want to go then you might not work that much hard your motivation should come from inside and the main purpose should be improving your own profile not in comparison with someone but just to improve your own profile by focusing on yourself another thing is will you be moving alone or if you are married will you be moving with your family and what factors will be influencing your decision because if you get selected for a scholarship and you don't go for that scholarship so definitely the professor who might have hired you would be disappointed in you. Overall, you would be making a bad impression of your country. When you find a scholarship and you decide to apply for that scholarship, you must keep these things in mind. There are a few other things that you must keep in mind. That if you're going for a scholarship somewhere, you're leaving your country and you are also spending some time in the other country, you might be missing so many opportunities at your home country. For example, you could become a civil servant if you stay in your home country, but you are sacrificing that thing. Or if you have been doing a job and you leave that job and go for a scholarship, you might get promoted if you continue that job. So do you really think that going on a scholarship is worth more than losing those opportunities then apply for that scholarship? One of the most important lessons that you must keep in mind and this is one of the most important advice that I give to every student is that make your circle bigger with useful persons. Make as much as connections because you never know. Sometimes someone from somewhere might help you out of the blue and you would be really amazed. So start making a connection in your research circle. The two biggest platforms to make your connections in your research community are Twitter and LinkedIn. I would advise if you don't have an account 
on Twitter or LinkedIn, make an account and start following the professors or researchers in your field in which you have already done studies or in the field that you are interested in to pursue your master's or PhD degrees. Sometimes some students ignore a factor that they stay indifferent in their universities, they don't have good connections with their teachers, their seniors or their class fellows. You never know, someone from somewhere might be useful at some point of time. So stay connected with your teachers because you might need them in future for taking a good reference. And most of the scholarships require a reference from your previous teachers that how a student used to be when a teacher was teaching that student. So that's why scholarships require a reference letter, also known as letter of recommendation. So for those letter of recommendation, always stay connected at least two of your previous teachers. And sometimes some of your fellows, like your class fellows or your senior students who have gone to other countries on scholarship to pursue their studies, they might be really useful. So stay in touch and ask them for the opportunities if you really want to apply for a foreign scholarship. As I have started this mini series about finding scholarships or scholarship hunt, that is it for first part of the video and there will be some upcoming videos in which I will talk about scholarship opportunities that what scholarship options are available in different countries so I will talk about that from each country. I will manage some podcast like videos with some of my friends who are studying in different other countries and then we will talk about the procedure for applying scholarships in those countries. I will definitely talk about some common countries like USA, UK, Canada or Europe and the scholarship opportunities in those countries like Fulbright in USA or Erasmus in Europe or South Korea and South Korea's GKS scholarship that is their government scholarship. At the same time, I will talk about some uncommon scholarship opportunities like studying in Mexico or South America or studying in Malaysia or Thailand and North Korea. I'm just kidding about North Korea. It is impossible to go to North Korea for studying purpose because that is not open to other countries. That's it for this video. See you in next video.